Hello everybody, this is Ron Finberg from CM Trading. Today's presentation of Bollinger Band Strategy. The idea of today's presentation is to create a strategy using Bollinger Bands in order to create like a way of trading uh, Forex instruments. Specifically, this, this uh, strategy is pretty good for Forex instruments more than uh, other, other items because of the way that Bollinger Bands trade. So it's very, works very well for, for Forex. Okay, so what are Bollinger Bands? You just started trading and now you get, we're throwing out these terms like Bollinger Bands. So what are they? Okay, very, very quickly, Bollinger Bands are calculated by, you know, you know what? I'll say this out, we're gonna say the definition, but really until we see a couple charts, it, you know, it makes sense if you have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's just go quickly with the definition. Bollinger Bands are calculated by taking the standard deviation of a trading instrument um, and the average moves over a given period of time. Okay, basically, what you got to know are that they're used to measure when instruments are oversold or overbought. That's the main thing you got to know. These two items are oversold or overbought. That's what they're used to. If a trading instrument trades up to its upper band, that means it's overbought. If it trades to its lower band, that means it's lower sold. So traders will use Bollinger Bands as a way of knowing when something is oversold. Hey, if it gets oversold, maybe it's a good time to be buying it. And they'll use it as a way of knowing when to short when when the Bollinger Bands show that things are over overbought. Okay, so here we have a an example. Um, we'll see here we have these lines on top. We got the lines on the bottom. And we got the middle line. Okay, so these are your Bollinger Bands. You have our lower line. Whenever, whenever our trading instrument, and here's a chart of the Euro dollar. Whenever our Euro dollar trades to the lower bands, it's considered oversold. It's a good time to buy. And whenever it trades up to the upper bands, it's considered overbought, and it's a good time to short. So you can see pretty much it worked out pretty well over you know in the beginning of this chart, but it didn't do so well later in the chart where it kept falling and falling falling even though you know it got oversold and it kept getting more and more and more oversold so just because something's oversold on the Bollinger Bands doesn't mean it will not continue to go down okay so basically uh, most traders will tell you that Bollinger Bands they do well they do the best during range based markets when when markets aren't moving that much or kind of stuck in certain ranges then Bollinger Bands are awesome they're really good but if there's like a lot of news in the market, if there's a trending market, then they will be terrible. As you can see in this chart, how the Bollinger Band stayed oversold for a long period of time. Okay, back to how it works. Um, there's like a standard formula that most traders use. It's called using this, the two standard deviations. Why do they use two standard deviations? This, ha this has to do with what's called the bell curve. This has to do with the bell curve where 90% of statistics fall within, like of chances fall within two standard deviations. So that's why people stick to the bell, to the two standard deviations. Also typically using when you're when you're plotting your moving average, you'll use a 20 period moving average. That's average. So therefore, for an example, what does that mean? So if the average move in the last 20 periods was 20 pips, meaning that in every period, uh, your trading instrument went from like its high to its low of only 20 pips, then that one means two, two standard deviations would be 40 pips away. Um, so as you can see over here, these, these bands get uh, wider and narrower, right? When there's less action, when, there's, when, the, when, when the trading instrument isn't moving so much, it's not going up and down a lot, then these Bollinger Bands tend to get narrower. But when there's a lot of movement and the and and uh, the highs and lows are getting wider or getting larger and larger, then the standard deviations get wider, get larger. So then the bands get wider. Okay. Uh, so for for example, back over here, if we have a moving average that's at 120, that would be the moving average is the middle line. So if our moving average is at 120, and our standard deviations was 40 pips. Then our Bollinger Bands would be at 120.40 and 119.60. That's just 40 pips away from that 120 level. So that's 
basically how these Bollinger Bands move. They show when things are over sold and when they're overbought and they're based on the buy the highs and lows of of uh, how the instrument is trading okay so the big the big question that everybody has is do they really work so as we mentioned before they do work but they they work best in the range-based markets when there's not a lot of movement in the market then when things are oversold they typically jump back higher but when things are moving a lot, when, when traders are just getting out of their positions, like what we had in this chart over here where the euro dollar, where the crisis in Europe was getting worse and worse, and people were just dumping the euros, then no one really cares about, let's face it, no one really cares about Bollinger Bands. When, when people want to get out of their, their euro dollar positions, no one is saying, hey, maybe it's oversold. It's not a good time to be selling now. No, you got to get out of your position because you think Greece is going to get kicked out of the EU, EU or Spain's going to go, and the entire banking system is going to get bankrupt. Then you don't really care. You just dump your, you just dump your holdings or, or short it really aggressively, and these Bollinger Bands don't make any, don't make a difference. So we see range-based markets they work. However, when there's trending or a lot of big news, and you know, when when there's a lot of uh, selling going on or a lot of really fast buying, then the Bollinger Bands don't work at all. Okay, so keep that in mind, knowing that. They work best in some markets and don't work at all in other markets. There's really two ways of trading. You can either trade it by deciding I'm only going to trade during range-based markets, and that's a, a great idea. However, the big downside though is you know you have to predict, you have to be you know Sardamus over here and know when the markets are going to be range-bound. Now it's not you know it's at 70, 70 percent of the time they are range-bound. Markets do kind of stay within the ranges about 70 percent of the time. So it shows there is potential for just buying and selling on the Bollinger Bands and just deciding I'm going to predict when the range-based markets are. But you have to be pretty good at that. You have to have a um, – it takes a while to know when markets are range-based and when they're not in order to, to be able to predict when they happen. Uh, the other way to trade Bollinger Band is what we're going to do today is create a – we're going to combine the two things together. We're going to find ranges within a trend, and that's what our presentation is all about. So let's see what we're doing over here. So we are, we're going to have – we're going to put together our Bollinger Band strategy. All right. Two main things here. We're going to look for th items that are in momentum. We're look for trends. We want – even though we said before that we – that they don't necessarily look – trade well with trends – we are going to look for trends, but we're not going to go against the trend. We're going to go with the trend. So traders like to say, the trend is your friend. It's one of those like old trading adage adages. Uh, you, the trend is your friend. So we're going to we're going to be we're going to make the trend our friend, and we're going to look for the momentum and try to go with the go with the side of the momentum. Okay. So how what are we going to do? We're going to we're going to try to ride. It's like we ride the waves. If anyone watching today is a surfer, we want to ride the waves. So we want to ride the trend, but we're only going to be buying when we're going to be. If the trade is going, if the trend is going higher, we're only going to be buying when the Bollinger Bands show that things are oversold, and we're only going to be shorting, we're only going to be selling when our trend is overbought. Okay. So what's how do you do this? This sounds like a little strange. You want to go with the trend. You want to you want to be buying something that's strong even though it's weaker so that's is it strong or is it weaker so how does that work so how to do this we're going to apply a longer term moving average okay so let's just bring up our chart over here let's uh before we get to that here a little secret recipe in doing this and putting together the strategy okay we're, so we're going to use a 30 minute or daily period chart i've found in my own trading that the 30 minute charts or the daily period charts work best for this Bollinger Band strategy. I'm not really sure why. I have a couple theories, but I'm not going to get into that. Just in general, the 30 minute and the daily chart looks the best. And we're also going to use a Bollinger Band with the standard formula that I told you before. And if you're using the MetaTrader platform, uh, when you when you load up, when you're adding Bollinger Bands, the window will look something like this. You just have to have over here the period of 20 and the deviations of two, and then you're good to go. You can add in those, those uh, Bollinger Bands. And then when you add your moving average, we're going to use a 50 period moving average. Okay, so we have our 20 period. This is like our shorter term. Our shorter term moving average is going to be 20, and our longer term period is moving average is going to be 50. 
Okay. So how it works, we're going to be buyers. I'm going to put out all the rules, and then we're going to look at a couple charts. Okay, we're going to be buying when an instrument is oversold, right? We're going to, we said before we're going to be buying. Let's go back to our charts here. We're going to be buying over here. We're going to be buying when our instruments are oversold, when they go, when they trade around the, Bollinger, the lower Bollinger Band. And we're going to be selling when they trade we're going to be shorting and selling when they go when they become overbought. All right. So we're going to be buying when when our instrument is oversold, but it also has to be above the 50 period moving average. So we want to see something's oversold, but that the instrument is, is also above the 50 period moving average. Why do we want it to be above the 50 period moving average? because it shows that the trend is still there. We're going to be still buying with the trend, make the trend our friend. Uh, similarly, we're going to be shorting when an instrument is overbought, but it's also below the 50 period moving average. Okay, So we're going to be buying when something's oversold, and we're going to be shorting when things are overbought, but as long as the momentum is there. Okay, now we have our exit strategies. Well, we'll get to that in a second. So here's a buy example. Let's look at this chart over here. So here's a chart of the pound dollar. It's a 30 minute chart. So over here where we have these two little circles, we see that the pound dollar had traded to the oversold levels on the Bollinger Band. So it was now being oversold, but as long as it was oversold, but the pound dollar is also above this green line here. The green line is a 50 period moving average. So we see we have this positive momentum. The trend was still to be, the, the trend was still high moving. Was a, there was a higher moving uptrend in the pound dollar, but it had a, a uh, shorter term sell-off. So we're going to be buying the pound dollar when, the, when it's trading above the green line, when it's, it's longer term trend is still there, but it has a shorter term sell-off. So we have these two positions here. We're going to be buying when it gets overbought, when it gets oversold, but it's still above the 50 period moving average. So we're taking, we're, we're just, we're trading the trend. The trend is move is to trend is moving higher, and we're buying on that trend when the when our Bollinger Band tell us that it's oversold. Similarly, here we have a chart of the euro dollar. The euro dollar had was selling off very much. Was selling selling off weak in the last couple months. So we see over here that, this, that the euro dollar had been in a negative trend. We have that green line which shows us that it's in a negative trend. And it's con and the euro dollar continues to stay below its 50 period moving average, and even though it was a negative trend, it still got into this overbought level. So we'd be would be selling here when the euro dollar gets overbought, as long as it stays below the 50 period moving average. Okay, so we're going to be selling. We're going to be really like s we want to sell. We want to we want to sell weak things when they're when they're rallying. And we want to buy strong things when they're selling off. So you want to basically, if you, something's hot, something if you have a good item, and you can buy it, buy it as like a, when it's at a good price. So we want to buy good things when they're good prices, and we want to sell bad things when they're being oversold. Okay, so that was our. Now we have our two. Uh, when to get out of position? We just explained how to when to get into position. Now the question is when do we get out of the position? Okay, so we're going to be exiting the position when the position trades back to the middle band, or if you're a riskier person, you can wait till it goes to the opposite Bollinger Band. So, in our chart here, if we bought in these areas, we'd be either selling when it gets back up to the red, middle red line, or if you really uh, like your position, you could wait until it gets to the oversold level. So either we, maybe you could sell half over here, another half over here. Or the other, I, other so that's when we exit for a profit. When you you could you could also be closing it when the when a bar trades below or above the moving average. So what does that mean? Now when do we get out of it? If you bought over here and then the pound dollar drops below the green line, then that means it's also time to get out. So we want to see it close an entire day above below that green line. But not a whole entire an entire. If you have an entire bar, entire one of these candles closes below the green line then it means it's time to get out of the position. Okay, so we want to be buying when it's oversold.
and we want to be getting out when it goes back up to these hoverbot levels. Or also, we want to take our losses. This is very important to have a lot of risk management when you trade. We want to take our losses quickly as soon as it, the trend goes away. Here. When the, when the trend isn't our friend, we get out of the position. Okay, so just keep that in mind. We want to go with the momentum, have the trend as our friend. And when that trend isn't our friend anymore, we get out. Um, so that's pretty much it. We want to be buying. We want to remember just uh, we want to be buying when you want to be buying good stuff when it's getting weaker, when it's selling off uh, over the short term. We want to be sh shorting bad stuff when it's when it has short term strength. Okay, thanks for viewing this this uh, little presentation about using Bollinger Bands for trading Forex. Um, if you have anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to email us at dealing at cntrading.com. If you have questions about this strategy or trading in general, feel free to email us there. Or if you want to ask me the questions uh, directly, you can hit me up at Twitter, at Ron Finberg. I'd be happy to answer any questions on Twitter. Uh, I want to wish everybody a wonderful day and good luck to all your trading. Bye-bye.